welcome to Horrified of the World's Madness Marathon. To celebrate Halloween, the Horrified of the World crew has made the Madness Marathon Halloween calendar. Every day, we open a door, and behind every door is a recommendation for a free horror game that you should play. 31 days, 31 recommendations, hours of fun. And on the 31st, we have a special surprise for you. But enough talk, let's see what hides behind today's door. Previously on the marathon, I recommended three games that were each the runner-up in their respective videos, videos where I took a look at five cult classic Half-Life 1 horror mods and picked a favorite out of the bunch to recommend. So why not, before we get to the big bad reveal on the 31st, take a look at one of the ones that I did pick at my favorite, and hopefully get one or two more of you to play it, because it really deserves it. Developed and published by the elusive Black Widow games, the hunger is set in the 50s as a Romero-esque plague seems to be sweeping the land, but you could be fooled for thinking that it's not the 1950s, as there is a 1990s era PC gamer magazine next to the radio broadcaster in the game's opening cinematic. The reason for that, and the other PC gamer advertising present in the game, will be the topic for another video, so just, you know, ignore it for now. We play as a man that cruises through the landscape in a very swanky car, and then for whatever reason we skid off the road and into a lake, and then the game begins. From here on out, it's a trek through hell, as we first escape our sunken car, and then find ourselves in a church graveyard. We enter the church itself, and find that everyone is dead, and as we come to this realization, the dead rise from their grave, and equipped with only an umbrella, we begin to fight our way through them. I think a brilliant touch here in the beginning is that the opening chapter that we play through is just us spending 30 minutes trying to make it back to where our car started in the opening cinematic of the game, and retracing that one minute journey. It's a nice reminder of just how much havoc the zombie apocalypse has wrecked upon the world in mere minutes, and it keeps you engaged when you see those familiar sights that were unruined just a few moments ago. Combat from here on out until we make it back to where we started is fairly simple and fairly straightforward, and it's not the show stealer of the game. Yet, we'll be fighting a lot of lone zombies that lurk around corners, and it's clear that the game is going easy on us, so that we have a chance to acquaint ourselves with the reach of the umbrella as well as get to know the zombies' patterns, where they typically hide, and how long their reach is and what their wind-up animation looks like. And as with any good Half-Life 1 horror mod, before it ever gets boring, we come across more weapons and begin facing more varied enemies. These zombies are joined by headcrabs that in this universe are apparently mutated cats, and also talking lady zombies that very fucking unnervingly say bullshit like this. <laughs> And that absolutely made me jump out of my seat the first time I heard it, which was when I was walking through a very dark tunnel, very much alone. But we are not just fighting zombies, headcrabs and the come to mommy zombies, there are also people here, and they aren't nice. The hunger has a flair for the dramatic, it knows how to set a scene, it knows how to get a reaction from the player, it knows good level design. And in no place is that more obvious than our first encounter with a police officer. We've so far had brief interactions with other humans, and they have been nothing but friendly. So it was a natural just approach a cop and ask, hey, what's up? But psych, just like in real life, all cops are bastards, and these are some mean fucking ones. He turns around and is clearly possessed or something, and the very first time I approached him, he shot me in the face and I died. It was such a good scare, because while it is a jump scare, it's a completely earned jump scare. And it's when the cops show up as enemies that the game really comes together. Every area becomes this brilliant exam for you as the player to prove to the game that you have mastered the skills that it has taught you up until now. Every area usually forces you to get into a compromising situation, where you are either exposed to gunfire from the police officers, or close range damage from the zombies. And I don't think I can probably convey how well this is handled, and how many incredibly immersive and intense moments that this creates in-game. There is something magical about having a group of zombies chase you while you sprint into a courtyard, where you have memorized where the five cops are hiding, and popping off headshots and taking them down with five perfectly lined up shots in five perfectly timed seconds. 
and then making your way to the next area. And it's a boss ass feeling when you shoot down a helicopter pilot and the whole helicopter just goes down. Or when you jump on a train and make it drive forwards while an army of zombies are chasing you and a gang of cops are firing at you. Or running through a swamp and luring a sea monster up to the surface so that you can shoot it in the face. There is no dull moment in this game. There's no point where you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. But there's also no moment where you are sure what to expect. Mostly. I did get stuck at one point in a level early on. And being the Half-Life vet, I just clipped out of bounds and found what I thought was a secret area full of ammo. But I actually just managed to find an area of the level where I would be passing by later on. And then when I went back to where I got stuck originally, I figured out the solution to the problem, because sometimes you just need to approach things from a different angle. Sometimes metaphorically, sometimes literally like here. But if the engaging to moment moment gameplay isn't enough to keep you engaged, there is also a story here that of course involves these possessed cops and what they're up to. And the pace picks up quite a bit more in chapters 2 and 3, and it's a solid narrative to support a solid game. And I'm still blown away by how good this thing is and how well it plays, given that it came out in 1999. Amazing. 13 out of 13. Just committed suicide, boy. Fresh meat. Why do we hunger? I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you've enjoyed the game in the video. Remember to go visit Horrified at World tomorrow and every day after for the remainder of October. You know, to see what other great free games are out there. From all of us here at Horrified at World. Stay extra spooky during this month and uh, take care.